All right, guys, this is the Matty Ice Show. Today we are bringing in somebody that is very well known here in Arizona. You have been brought up in a crazy amount of podcasts of mine, interviews of mine. I hate mm-hmm. to say podcasts, mm-hmm. interviews of mine. So right now we're with Swanee. Hi. You have, um, first of all, Dot opened up a freestyle and he said, shout out uh, Swanee for Swanee the Braves. Swanee for the Braves, uh-huh, did that's wa- me. Did you watch that interview? I did, freestyle? and I was excited, I felt honored. That's actually how I first saw your Instagram, was when he shouted it out, and I was like, oh my God. Cool. From Dot? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about, um, let's open it up like this. I want people to get to know, because everybody in Arizona knows what you do. Mm-hmm. Some of my audience might not, but I want them to get to know you this interview as well. Okay. So let's start it off like this. Um, were you born in Arizona? Or are you from Arizona? No, I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I moved to Arizona when I turned 18 in 2011 when I graduated high school. I was 18 and pregnant, so I did what I had to do. Um, and I've been out here ever since. So, yeah. Did you move out here because you were pregnant, or what was the reason? I why moved you- out here because my ex was a student at ASU, and I was 18. This is your baby, so... Where are you going? Right. We both in college. Right. You know, so I moved out here. Um, that way it could be easier for him to be a father to our kid, you know. When did you guys meet? Um, I met when I, we met when I was 17. Okay. In high school. Obviously in LA. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, Upland, California. So because I was in foster care, uh, you know, I was raised in foster care, um, I went to a lot of different schools. So from, from 10 to like 17, I was in different homes. So I ended up in the IE, like Inland Empire. You heard of Rancho Cucamonga? Of course. That yes. was from uh, what? From fr- fr- Friday, Friday after yeah. next, yeah. yeah. Day, day, day Day and Craig. Yeah. Um, so I, I moved to Upland to finish high school, and I met my ex through my foster mom. He was like the son of my foster mom's friend, you know. So you grew up in foster care from what age? Um, 10 to 18. I aged out when I was 18. So what happened between 1 and 10? Um... And you know, I'm, I'm saying, like, who did you live with at that point? Uh, so, okay, so from one to five, I live with my mom. Okay. My mom's uh, from Belize, so she's not, you know, she's not legal out here. And don't be trying to go get my mama because you ain't going to find her. I heard Belize is uh, beautiful, by the way. It is beautiful. And my mom's beautiful. Um, but my mom, she, you know, she had 12 kids. I'm the fifth of 12. Um, we live with my dad when I turned from six to 10. Um, and unfortunately, my dad was sick. My dad uh, molested me and my siblings. Uh, so I ended up in foster care by the time I was 10. Um, and that kind of started my journey, you know, going back and forth, um, throughout, you know, the system started in LA, Los Angeles County, then ended up in San Bernardino County. And then, you know, when I turned 16, I could take a bus. I'm like, I'm not going to be switching schools, you know, so I'm gonna take the bus and I'm gonna make it work. So you've been through obviously a very traumatic experience in your life growing up. Yes. Uh, We don't need to elaborate on it, Mm -hmm. but obviously you had to grow up at a young age fast. Yes, definitely. So at 10 years old, here you are going into a foster home. Mm Mm-hmm. What did, uh, what was your mentality like then? And and what were you thinking um, your future was going to be? Or I mean, I mean you I was, start to think a lot of things. I definitely, I was, I was always older than my age. You know, I was 10, but I had two younger siblings, you know? So my sister, Ashley, she's like my baby. She gets on my last nerves, but I love her. So she told me I better shout her out. Uh, I started doing hair on her head. She was my scapegoat and this sucked at first. Um, but you know, it started at that age. I knew I, I was at first I wanted to be a lawyer. So wait, you started doing hair at what age? 10. Okay. I practiced with my sister and it was bad. She would get her hair done at the shop. In foster care? Yeah. Because, okay, so I lived with a lot of different families, Mexican, white. It was even one Asian family. They didn't even speak English. I don't know how the hell I ended up there, but they were nice. Uh, so I would practice on everybody's kid. The Asian girl had braids. She was like three. But um, I would practice on my sister and I just got better, you know. And they didn't know how to do our hair. They didn't, you know, they didn't have classes for foster parents then. So we made it work, you know. So I had to do my own hair. I ain't going to school looking like silly from the color purple. Right. Okay, so at the age of 10, you started doing hair. Yes. When did you um, get out of foster care? I aged out of foster care when I was 18. I got pregnant um, with my first son. His name is Wesley. Um, and I was afraid that they would take him from me because I was young. You know, it was my senior year. I'm pregnant. So I emancipated myself. That way I could be a mom and move out here with his father. So what would you tell people listening to this interview or people out there um, that have maybe had to go through something similar that you've had to go through? Um, even just going into foster care or even being molested at a young age? I would, a, tell them, I would tell them that, you know, one thing, the, the one thing I've learned is, yeah, you have family that you're born into, but that is, that's not the family you have to end up with. Um, and it's not your fault. <laughs> Everything that you went through is not your fault. Like, you were a kid, you're supposed to be protected. Um, and if you're still struggling with that as an adult, you're acting normal for what you've been through. People like to make you feel crazy. 
I've been in foster homes where they would assume that I was a bad kid because I was a foster kid. When really, I'm an abused, <laughs> traumatized kid, and you're supposed to love on that person, you know? And instead, they treated us like a bad kid immediately. So I would say you're, you're, you're going to be fine and just, just learn, love yourself. It's do, not your fault. You do, you, know? do you believe in therapy and stuff like that? I do. I actually start counseling in a week, you know, just as an adult. I went through therapy in high school, and I'm not going to lie. I was like, I'm not telling this person my business. Um, but then I went through counseling again for my marriage, and that actually helped for the time being. And then now that I'm, I'm I went through a divorce, and I'm a mom before. I own three salons and the fifth of 12, and it's a lot. So I need somebody to vent to because I'm the person everybody else comes to, so I need an outlet. So I'm, I'm going to start counseling next week. I have anxiety. I struggle with anxiety really bad. How many employees do you have? I have, help me, May, uh, eight. I got eight employees, but I have about 10 tenants at my other salons who rent at my suites. So they rent out space, like a chair? Or so Touch Your Love Salon off Southern and McClintock is a commission. So that's my employees. Okay. And then I have my suites off in, in Tempe as well, where I started as an independent hairstylist. They rent rooms, like suites. So I have massage therapists. I have estheticians. I have a tattoo artist in there. All right, so let's slow down for a second. Yeah. What's the salon's name? They're all Touch of Love Salon. A touch of Love Salon. And on Google, it's like Touch of Love Salon number one, number two. When did the first one open? I opened it in 2017 is when I got my LLC. So number one was in 2017? Yes. When did number two happen? Before the pandemic, when did number two happen? Number two happened during the pandemic, 2020. 2020? Yeah, I opened it November during the pandemic, and they looked at me like I was crazy. Um, and he's like, you know, people are closing down, but I was open. Especially because you're a non-essential. Yes, I was not considered essential. At first we were, but then all of a sudden we weren't anymore. Um, so a lot of my clients, you know, my, my Scottsdale crowd, I met them during the pandemic because they would come to my house to get their hair done. Um, and the pandemic is when I got most of my clients. All the cardinals, it all wow, started that year. Wow, because they all want to come, everybody can't go to the, the salon or the boutique, so they're going to yeah, come, they couldn't. come see you. And I was for, doing mostly house calls for, you know, right. the celebrities. Paid. Exactly, getting paid for the house calls. Um, they had no issues paying it. And the girls who were driving to Santan Valley <laughs> from Scottsdale, that clearly we had drive. time. Yeah, it's a good 45-minute drive. Okay. Um, and they made the drive, and they were paying full price, and we sat in the living room and did hair. So that's how I met a lot of my Scottsdale, my bottle girls, you know, T-Parks and Ayana. Um, Alexis. Alexis actually works in my shop part time, but she's a, a, a bartender at Monarch. Um, but yeah, I met a lot of those girls during that time because you know Airbnb parties were popping. Hey, let's pop it back. <laughs> <laughs> when was the third? When did the third one? Um, is the third one open? Yeah, I opened my third one uh, last summer. Um, so it's funny. It's not funny. It fucking sucked. Sorry, I said a bad word. But look, they they broke into my shop. Somebody broke my window. June but you know, 21st. Swanee has insurance. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. Thank right. God. Right. Hey, I wish they would have burned it down. We got a million, but they didn't. Uh, they Straight broke up. dead ass. Right. I'm like, damn, you're going to do some damage. Do some damage. Right. Uh, but they came in there. They broke my shop. And that was June 21st, 2020, 2021, last year. And then the following month, I opened my third suite. What did they steal from your shop? I mean, what the register. It turned out. I thought I mean, it was somebody I fired. Did they really think you're going to leave thousands of dollars in cash in the register? They definitely thought. Um, but them well, the, stealing just my register, even though there was not much in there, I was able to get a, a good return back because of my insurance. And right. my windows got fixed, and I went on vacation gotta, with that. They got to take care of the register, too. Exactly. All that shit. Missing time work. And my feelings being hurt. Right. All that. So, Emotional, yeah. Yeah, I was stressed out. I was actually really sad. I cried when my shop, the window got broken. I felt violated, you know? Like, that's my baby. We live there. So it hurt my feelings at first. And when, when I realized it wasn't personal, I wasn't as hurt. Did they find out who uh, who did it? Yeah, he was picked up. He actually did it to a few businesses in Tempe. Uh, Tempe Police Department were able to apprehend him, and they invited me to come to his court date. But it's like, you know, my window's fixed. It wasn't personal. This guy doesn't know me. I don't know him. Right. So who knows yeah. what he's going exactly. through? Exactly. He clearly needed it. So how'd they catch him? Um, he did it again and got caught on camera. that time. Yeah, and I had him on camera as well. He had a ponytail. I'm like, okay, he got his hair done. I would have looked out for him, but they caught him eventually. You right. know, yeah. So let's talk about, because you have worked with a ton of Arizona Cardinals, you've mm -hmm. worked with some celebrities, you've worked with a lot of artists here that are blowing up in Arizona. Yes. Um, let's talk about when it first started, uh, your first, let's just say, celebrity. So my first athlete actual celebrity. Like, athlete celebrity was Giuseppe. Like, I don't know if you know of him, but he was, he's not in the league anymore, but he had a really good story, and I met him first. And I have to give him his credit because he was cause he was a football player. Um, but after that was Kelly Oubre for the Suns when he was out here. Um, and Kelly was cool, but, you know, 
I have a thing about light skins. They can be very sensitive. So, you know, that relationship didn't work out, but moving on. Uh, the next light skin made it better. I met Byron that same week. Okay. Uh, and he had different light skin. Byron's not sensitive at all. Uh, so immediately I clicked with Byron. I liked. I met him. I did a house call, and I, and I see him, and I go, do I do what I know about you? And he's like, what? I'm like, you got to start breaking my client's heart. You know, you know, <laughs> Byron's from Arizona. So it's like, it's not his fault right. that he's handsome and he's he's athletic and smart. So the girls fought for him, but he was just honest. Like, hey, I don't, I don't, they, they, I don't leave them on. I don't leave them on. It, it ain't his fault. Mike, uh, Mike Bibby's is uh, his uncle, too. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, that's Byron's uh, so cool. First of all, insert. He was at Arizona, the, uh, the, the Vegas uh, festival, mm -hmm. and he got to be on stage with Fat Joe. Cause it just he just cool. Cause you know? uh, his his uncle his Bibby's brother I don't know if it's his exact uncle his name is Dane. Yeah, yeah. He's tight with Fat Joe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna be on the stage. I'm like, oh great, can you give me some water? We were hot as hell out there. Right. Um. But yeah, B uh, Byron was my first, and I always uh, give Byron even though he's sometimes late. The fact is, when I'm late, he's cool and chill. He doesn't give me a hard time. He's very humbled in a lot of ways. Um, and he's and one of the best cornerbacks in the game now. He's one he's, of the best and literally the best personality. Like, so it's funny that he kind of started off, you know, your career as far as getting the celebrity yes. athlete. Right? He was like my second or third interview ever. Look at him out here hiding the opportunities. Yeah. Like, he's very, very uh, vocal about it. And you, would, you wouldn't think that because he's so humble and quiet. Shout out Gino. Yeah, yeah, period. Uh, yeah, Gino, uh-huh. I know Gino's but, happy. He's a big Drake fan. Drake's dropping an album tonight. Oh, yeah, see, I don't even know much about that. I do like Girls Want Girls. Okay. Just saying that's a good song. Um, but Byron was my first Cardinal, and then he handed me Isaiah Simmons, um, who was one of my favorite Cardinals as well. First round um, pick. Yeah, he's awesome. He's tall. He he has it all, the whole package. Right. Um, and after that, it was, you know, you know Benjamin. And then I, I also did Kyler Murray's hair, DeAndre Hopkins. <sighs> Stop back for a second. You did Kyler's hair? I did. How was Kyler? Because I hear a lot of different things about him, so I want to hear it right Kyler. from Swanee because you're no bullshit. Swanee's going to tell you exactly bullshit. how it is. If, how, what you tell me right now is what I'm going to believe, by the way, too. Okay, so I'm going to tell it like it is. Yeah. He actually told me don't tell nobody, but I didn't sign an NDA, so I'm going to say what the hell I want to say. Um, Kyler, I did his hair, and I thought he was so cool. Okay. You know? Um, I did his hair. I was honored to do his hair. It's fucking Kyler Murray. Like, hello, it's Kyler Murray. Um, I noticed immediately that he's very entitled, you know? And I'm a strong black woman, so I, I, this is going to be a very interesting relationship. When I'm doing your hair, we're, we're dating a lot of us are married and some of us break up. Me and Kyler broke up. Um, and the reason we broke up is because some people, you know, when you're raised a certain way and you're so used to getting what you want, you don't know how to respect other people sometimes. And I'm an adult. I'm a mom. I'm 29 years old. Uh, fast forward. One day I'm getting ready to go do his hair. Mind you, I've done his hair probably. When you say you broke up, what do you mean by we that? We broke up because he, 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 I felt disrespected. Broke up with, like, he's, you're not doing his hair anymore? I'm no longer doing his hair. Okay. So I did his hair for about, I would say, two or three months straight. But I was seen about once or twice a week. Okay. Like, consistently. He, he was newly getting braids. I he would just I hit you up like, yo, I need an appointment. I took his braid virginity, technically. When he DM'd me. Because I've been seeing a lot recently. Yeah, and I don't do those. So, you know, I'm happy he has somebody to do it. Um, I knew he would find somebody. He DM'd me immediately, uh, and I responded back, and I'm like, hey, um, yeah, I can do your hair, whatever. I get to his house, I'm like, hey, how'd you hear about me? Like, which, which one referred you to me, you know? Oh, no, I found you on my own. Cap. There's no way. 100%. I've been doing these guys here for about a year. It's locker talk. Come on now. They all have braids. It's half the damn team wears braids, white and black. So I let it be. Clearly, you don't want to make it clear that you on a, the Swanee train. It's cool. So I did his hair. Um, but then, you know, we would have little moments where we would clash. One of the moments was uh, he made a comment about, the shade room and how black girls run it and how they can be messy. And I'm like, hello, I'm, I'm a black woman. Like, calm yourself. You know, I'm doing your hair, but don't, don't, don't do that. too much. Yeah, yeah, calm yeah. yourself. And he like, um, what's, the, what's the problem? You're Belizean. Your mother's from Belize. No, I'm a black. When the police pull me over, I'm a black female. They don't say she's Central American. They, she, I'm black. So watch yourself. And you half black, right? So calm down. Um, but I've, <laughs> I'm moving on. So then uh, one day he calls me and he's like, hey, Swanee, when you come on Thursday, can you wear pants? And I'm like, excuse me? I'm thinking you, you're about to buy me a fucking uniform because you want me to wear pants. Mind you, it's 122 degrees. I'm over here rushing after CrossFit because I work out to go and do your hair. Um, and you want me to wear pants. I'm trying to figure out why. I don't want to wear pants. I want to wear what I wear. Why the fuck do I have to wear pants? If you can control your eyes, that's one thing. And if your girlfriend's insecure, that's her problem. So whatever the problem is, and because I never got that detail, I, my response was, you don't buy my uniform. I'm 29 years old. You're, what, 22? I'm a mom of four. I work out every day. I, I service you whenever you want. One braid is out of place and I come and fix it for you. And you want me to wear pants? You can fuck off. So Hold on. Your you, you said that to him? 
No, I told him we're done. I didn't say fuck off, but I said you, you got me. You got me fucked up. Your appointment's canceled on Thursday. Uh, excuse me. I'm like your appointment's canceled. Well, can you not tell the team about this? Oh, I'm telling the whole fucking team about this. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't tell the team. How dare you disrespect me? I'm an adult. I felt very disrespected. What do you so think? That that, what, what, what do you think the reasoning was? Was it was, was this girl over there before when you were doing? It, yeah, I met her once, but she was a sweet girl. We both do hair, so I, I thought we were bonding. But you know. It's not the first time the guys use their girl as a reason as to why they're doing something. A lot of times it's them, and they can't control themselves. Um, I'm not attracted to Kyler. I don't like like so he, he never like um, he never came on to you or anything. No, like that. never. It made you feel uncomfortable. All of my my athletes are very respectful because I set the tone. I'm you're gonna respect right. me. I'm not here to fuck on you. I don't care how much money you have. I don't even watch football. I don't know you until you get in my chair. <laughs> so it's like I'm not here for that, and, and they know that, and that's why we have the relationship that we have. I did call him petite one day, and let me tell you why. He's big now, though. I mean, be real with you. He's been working out recently. He's, yeah, he's... but he's still my height. So when I said petite, I didn't mean <laughs> to offend him, but I was trying to pick up the barber chair to move it to get it closer to where I need to put him. I'm strong. Right. I deadlift 205, so I picked up the chair on my own. He go, oh, you can't pick up that chair. And I go, bro, we both petite. I saw you in the gym. Um, I saw some video you just posted. Period. You go, you go hard. I'm pretty hard. Yeah. Like, I have four kids, and I have a six-pack. I mean, it's five and a half. It's getting there. The little bottom part is a little hard. And right, we have right. four babies, but... You know, that's basically it. I think he's a great guy. I think that this they're going to make it to the Super Bowl because Arizona, the Super Bowl is here. We have to. Here this year. Uh, and all the guys on the team, fuck, they're amazing. The I'm, ex- I'm so excited. We need to invest in Airbnbs. So if Kyler hits you back and he said, yo, you know, I need I need Swanee back. My braids just haven't been, you know, up to par with what Swanee would do. Would you take him back? I would. Because I'm... Uh, First of all, if God can forgive me, I'm not perfect. We all make sins. We all fucking, you know, fuck up sometimes. And if I can forgive uh, nobody, I'm going to forgive him. I think Kyler will get his contract if he sees you again and gets the braids um, the way Swanee does it. Because he's, he's looking for a max I agree. Right I mean, I'm just saying the first day I did him, we got a lot of good attention. And it was like, oh, Kyler with the braids. And he was all confident. In my, I, You know, you saw the difference. It was, everybody was all excited for him. So I, I do. I wish him the best, but I don't like him <laughs> at all. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I love the honesty. So, but you no, take him back as a client, but you don't like. I would. It's okay. business, you know. But I know how to handle him now, and I know that if I do choose to get back in a relationship, I have to wear pants. So maybe just the winter, December to January. Outside of that, I can't do his hair. Wow. Yeah. So you're into fitness. Yes. Do you eat very clean as well? I mean, if you have a six- hell no, I eat whatever I want. Metabolisms is crazy. I poop every morning. <laughs> okay. I do. All right. Ask everybody. I do. <laughs> but fitness is something that's really important. It's very important to me. Not only is it for me to stay toned, and I have, I have three boys, and I, and I have one daughter, and my boys are getting bigger, and I'm going to kick your ass if you think you can kick my ass. And my oldest likes to race me. I just like to be fit. It, it feels good to wake up early. And for as sure. a businesswoman, I want to be the what first time one out there. Uh, well, I used to work about 5 a.m., but then my life changed a little bit. So now I'm up around 6 my kids have school. I get up early. I like to work out before work. So, how important is it for you to be a mom of four? It Especially means the world to me. You've you've experienced life in a foster home, and you've seen, unfortunately, you know. My kids are my life. Like without them, I have nothing. Like I, I was excited to be pregnant at eighteen. I was the one in high school, a one month pregnant, sticking my belly out so everybody knew that I was pregnant, <laughs> looking dumb as hell. Now that I look back, like girl, grow up. But my kids are my life, and they mean everything to me. You know, I want four shops and more because I want them to take over. And I bring them to work with me so they can see that their mom works hard, you know? You said earlier, um, Girls Want Girls is one of your favorite songs. Yeah. You are engaged right now. Yes, I am. it's to a girl. Yes. To a female. Diana, what's her? Is there Diana. Diana. She want me to say Kalavi, so you got to call her Kalavi. Okay, so you obviously, you had four kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you, were in, you were married? I was married. For how long? I was married to my ex for eight years. And we were together for 11 years. And this um, is obviously, a, a male obviously had kids. You know, yeah, right? yeah, definitely. Right. You know, it's funny. I want, not even funny, I want to share the story really quickly. Uh, because a lot of my clients, they just, one day, minute I had a husband and four kids, and now I have a whole fiance. She's a girl, and we're engaged within, I've only been with D for nine months. Um, but I met her in a moment where my marriage was in shambles. Like, you know, I praised this person, I prioritized this person, this person was lying to me. I tried to be the perfect wife, the best wife. Um, to my ex, he used to be a cop for Tempe. So I wanted to be that cop wife with the businesses and the mother of four breastfeeding every last one of them. I had to buy new boobs because I breastfed all of them. Um, and so I felt like I'm being this great mom, this great wife, because I want him to see me as perfect. Only to find out this fucker wasn't even perfect. He had secrets and lies. So he left me vulnerable in June when I learned about his infidelities and his lies and secrets. Um, so I met D in August. 
And she walks in. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm gay because I like this girl. Crap. See, wait, but, you never were um, sexually attracted to females No, I definitely her? was. I always thought girls were beautiful. Like, we're all gay but, for girls. But okay. I had a threesome like, like two summers ago. And that was my first experience. I did it for my ex because he never had one. I never had one. All my siblings had one. I have 12 siblings. You, and I, you said this was with your ex-husband. Yeah, so my ex-husband. That's, I had a threesome with him and, uh, and a girl. That was your first time ever experiencing anything with a girl? Yes, what, ever. What was that experience like? At first, it was great. We were in a tub. We had some hypnotic. I don't even drink. I just started drinking last year in a bathtub. I, I even you, booked the your, room. Your husband and then? Yeah, I made a date night. So okay. I, I told the girl to come. I actually went through a few girls. I had to pick the one that matched me because I don't want nobody with a fatter ass than me. Then he, he'll leave me for them. So I picked somebody who was similar to my body type and shape. That way. That you were attracted to. Yeah, and that I could be, uh, like, not feel overpowered, overwhelmed. So I met the girl. I told her, hey, you should come. I booked a room at the Omni Resort in Scottsdale, period. Uh, 300 for the night. Got a babysitter to watch my kids. I told my mom, hey, it's going down tonight. Everybody knew. It wasn't a secret. All the girls in the shop knew. Your this, mom knew? Yes. She had one, too. I just wanted to know. I need everybody to tell me what the experience would be like. They were more so scared. Like, girl, you better be careful. You might lose your husband. But I'm like, okay, well, we've been fucking for like 11 years. I'm getting, it's boring now. So we need to spice it up. You and you were very faithful. Very. Very. Okay, in 2018, I talked to somebody, but I've never like had sex with another person in gotcha. 11 years. Never penis, never in my vagina. Um, so you've had one sexual partner besides your fiance right now in the past 10, 11 years. 11 besides years. Besides the threesome. Yes, okay. literally. And she didn't put nothing in me, so technically all I did was eat her vagina, technically. But <laughs> then she fucking shit it. So after that experience, when she pooped on the bed, I just thought... <laughs> Wait, so was, did she shit because she was getting anal penetration? Yes. Or, okay. She told us what toys to buy because she was the expert. Mind you, I've been gotcha. fucking the same person for 11 years. I'm not really sexually. So you went to Fascinations and got the order. That yes, she, I went you. directly to Fascinations right. and she told me what to pick up. So I picked it up. I spent $300 on the room, 300 on the toys. I fed her ass. That, no, let me tell you what the fuck I did. I gave her enchiladas. So she wanted like the whole, she, I mean. She was hungry. Gotcha. You know, they have a little restaurant at the Omni. So I fed her. Well, the least we can do is feed her. We're about to fuck Talk, her. Let me right. feed her. Yeah. So I fed her and we get in there. She probably shouldn't have done enchiladas. Probably shouldn't have done that. Um, so after all the toys, I had no idea that she even shit until, you know, we'd have been fucking for five hours. So I, I didn't realize that she pooped because my ex didn't tell me. So because just, you're straight fucking for five hours. Just yeah. Just foreplay fucking yeah. everything. Back, we even had a back massage in between. I even paused Alexa because the, 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 the word was uh, Corona. Because remember, it was, COVID, it was COVID. So the safe words was Corona because I'm the girl. This is my husband and you're the bitch that's fucking on us. So I have to be comfortable because I'm the one. It ain't like it's two niggas. It's right. Two so if she's girls. doing something out of line. You yeah. Know. So I said Corona because he was eating her vagina without me telling him to do that. I'm eating. I'm on her face. She's eating my vagina, but he eating her vagina. I look back like, how the fuck? So y'all know what the fuck y'all doing because you eating and she feel it. And I don't know that it's happening. So I call Corona because I'm a control. I, okay, I can be controlling. I, I want it to happen when I want it to happen. That's that's my that's how I get off, gotcha. right? Okay. So anywho, they didn't listen. So I call Corona. We took a break. She's like, "Well, I'm gonna go. No, bitch, you're gonna sit down because I already paid for this time. Let me go talk to my husband in the bathroom." Right. So I tell him I'm all drunk and until like you better get your fucking shit together. You thirsty as fuck. Right. Like follow the rules, bro. Right. Are we going to fuck home to our kids? Right. And I paid the babysitter too. We got to hurry to fuck up. Right. So then we get out there. He start over. Then we start off with a massage. It was edible strawberry you know she's and massaging you guys no he was massaging both of us and gotcha. she was talking about how much our relationship is so amazing and blah, blah, blah. okay sure let's get back to fucking so then i let him i ended up letting him have sex with her even though i said i wouldn't do it but i did because you're was just watching in a moment she's yeah i was watching i'm telling her right. get your shit you know might as well right. um so then it was cool but then after we walked her to the car come back to the room he go i got something to tell you i'm like what do you need to tell me he moves the pillow he's like yeah she shit it she and all i could think about is that am- I- she amber heard the bed bro i ate her vagina one more time after that so that's the problem he didn't even look out for me i was drunk i didn't know so that was my was it like a, was it i mean i'm not to like it it was whack got you and let me tell you something that i don't even want to say but i'm gonna say it when i was driving home the next morning because i didn't wash my hands afterwards because oh. i was one putting the toys in her butt they looked like a little different color and it was the color of the <laughs> shit on the bed Swanee, you gotta love you because you're just honest and, and graphic. And so when I got home, love you I, I look at him and I go, "Bro, don't tell me this is shit on my fingers." Right. So when I saw her the next day, she was gonna get her hair done. I figured, okay, I'm gonna bring her panties. She left in the bathroom. And I was gonna say, "Hey, shitty booty," but I didn't because I'm like, okay, that's fucked up. She probably doesn't even know that I know. I mean, clearly you shit it on the bed. The sheets are white. Is I'm pretty she- sure the hotel people thought I shit it on the fucking bed. So let's get back to the threesome really quick. Did okay. You, besides the 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 shit. 
which you didn't know about until after. Besides the shit, how was the I experience? loved how women kiss. Okay. It's so intimate. And I just passionate. saw you just posted a kiss on Instagram. Yeah. It was one of the most. Pa- I mean, I watched it. It was one of the most passionate. It kisses is I've right. Ever seen. It really was. We, <laughs> kissing is the best ever. Like, first of all, I release this talks, and not everyone knows how to kiss. That's just facts. Um, but the fact that I'm with somebody who knows how to kiss, that's that's so that's my what thing. really started for you was the kiss. Yes. It was just very. She knew intimate. how to kiss, and the way girls touch each other, it's like we know how to touch each other because we're we're women. So I'm gonna touch you the way I want to be touched. Guys and their mustache and beard, and they just so fast. And bro, slow down, like. Damn, I don't even like that. So, yeah, I do feel like women know how to do other women. And the way she ate my vagina was different compared to what my ex did. So she did a good job. Yeah, because she knew what to do. Nobody's better than my, my fiancé. Let's make that clear. But but that night. it was it was, I knew that it could be a difference. Okay, I have to tell you something. Okay. Fiancé, I'm thinking ex-husband. So fiancé fi- now. Fiancé. No, better than your fiancé Yeah, fiancé is She Kalabi. ate it better than your ex-husband. Though. Yes. Okay. Facts. Right. No cap. Um, all facts. So Diana <laughs> Kalavi, I don't even want to share this because everybody, if anybody tries to take her from me, I'm killing them and her and everybody else involved. But um, she was the reason why I experienced my first orgasm. Your first orgasm was not with um, your ex I was 28 when I experienced my first orgasm. I, th- I never knew your body turns into a scorpion. And this was, um, f- was she giving you head or was she fingering you? What was it? Head. So and and the, was, okay, okay, right? okay, let me not stop capping. The rose, you know what the rose is? The rose. It's a little pink rose. It's a, it's a vibrator. Yes, okay. The rose. And, you know, yeah, it got the job done. And I, I thought something was wrong. I'm like, girl, what are you doing to me? I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital because I was like, my body's doing stuff I've never seen before. How long did she make you just go scorpion crazy? Like, It was like, uh, for, uh, it was a long time. It was a long time. I was very uncomfortable. I didn't like the way I felt at first. And, I, and I'm too loud. So I'm screaming. She's like, you got to be quiet. I'm like, bitch, I don't know how to be quiet. This is a lot. I'm going through a lot. <laughs> it's like the Holy Ghost is taking over my body. It's in my spine, in my back. Like, and that's you, when you knew that's, that's wifey. That's, is that what guys feel when they nut in people? You know what I mean? I mean, I don't when feel like, like a story, but it feels fuck. Yeah, I mean. You they gotta, start shaking. You, you need to have, you need, you're very sensitive for a good minute, I would yeah, say. Yeah, sure. it's just crazy. If that's what you guys feel, I get it. I'm no, I, I would never judge another man in my life because I can't even control myself. Yeah, it's amazing. So, and I'm sure she's made you orgasm plenty of oh, times. Oh, plenty of times. Sometimes, twice in one night. I'm like, girl, listen, I need to save this for another day. Um, she's just very, uh, you know, Dee's been in a relationship with women since she was, for about 10 years now. So she was in a relationship with women and men. Men and women, so yeah. do you consider yourself right now bisexual, gay? What do you, how do you identify? I'm bi. Okay. Because I still think men can be beautiful, and I think women are beautiful. Um... I personally don't care to put a title on it. I, I, it's like, I like Diana. That's who I fell for. That She was the one who, I was gay for her. You know? A lot of us were gay for Diana. So you, I just won. That's all. So you have um, a very deep emotional connection with her. It's, it's very deep. Physical, it, emotional, the whole night. You know how you get bubble guts or butterflies when you like somebody? Bubble guts when you have to take a shit. So butterflies is a good feeling, right? Mm-hmm. When you actually like somebody. Right. So it's beyond butterflies. She's my twin flame. Like, we're the same people. She gets on my damn nerves. Let me not make it like we're perfect. We're not. Um, but she's my best friend, my fiance, my my lover, my my soulmate, all in one. And as much as we disagree, she brings out the things that I don't want people to tell me about myself and then forces me to see it. And sometimes she does things. I'm like, damn, is that how I do it? So then I've, I've changed so much in the, in the nine months I've met her because she's been able to show me things about myself that I didn't know that I was doing wrong. Or even with my relationships with my siblings or my kids, she was able to... You know, just, I guess, call it out. She's not really afraid to tell me how I am and what it is. When do you guys plan on getting married? I plan on getting married, hopefully, early January. So, initially, it was going to be October, I mean, August. But BDOT, that's my bro. This nigga's in Australia. Just got engaged? Yeah, yes. He told me about that before he did it, too. uh, I was so excited, yeah. Um, But he, he's my ordained minister. He got to cook the chicken. And he's my best man. So, I got to wait until he get back. You understand what I'm saying? That's the best man? Yes. Part. That's my bro. Uh, and he's going to marry us. That's going to be hilarious. He's also a DJ. And he I also does have. Everything. Yes. And he then cooks. He does everything. Period. Doc can fucking cook. He can cook he amazing. He made me the most fire chicken parm sandwich I've ever had. The first time I met him was through his food. But outside of B. Dot being my DJ, uh, DJ Prodigy is also my other DJ because she's going to, you know, sub in. She's also one of my clients. So I want to make it clear I have both of them. But B. Dot is uh, a brother to me and we relate on a lot of levels, you know? Dot's so. a great person. He's somebody that, you know, has done a lot. He's won, you know, he's won the Celebrity All-Star game for yeah. like the NBA. That's a huge fucking thing. Period. You know what I mean? He, he was the winner against, like, 
big names or anything. Kevin Hart was like a lot of people. Are my kids knew who B Dot was. That's how I knew. Okay, clearly you're somebody because my babies are telling me, "Hey, mom, I know who B Dot is." So out of um, somebody with like all the notoriety he has, to you'll never. He drives around on the Honda Dot Mobile. I mean, regular ass car with his dog. He has a scooter. Period. Dots and the dog. Very humble, uh, and we can relate in a lot of ways. He ha- works hard. That dude can For do sure. anything, um, and he's not. He's he puts like he's not afraid to share his light with other people. I met him the first time I met him. He's That's like, why hey, he's successful. Very. And he's a great fucking father. Period. And he's going to be a good husband. A great husband. Most so definitely. I'm excited Sh- for them. Shout out Dottie. Period. And he can rap. He really can. <laughs> he, can he dropped a freestyle on this show that was like insane. Yeah. He's really good at what he does. And I think that he's going to go so far. This is just the beginning for him. So I'm excited to see where he ends up. So some of the other people that I want to shout out that know you, um, somebody that I have a lot of respect for, obviously, um, Terrence, Chillioner Terrence. That's my brother. Arizona baddies. He's, yes. He's really done a really good job with that platform. I got to tell you about him. So when I first met Terrence... I didn't know who ran that baddies page. All I know is they posted T Parks when she got the blue passion twist. And that was her first time doing blue. That was your first time really tapping into Arizona baddies? Yes. When he posted her, I didn't I, I saw the page but I wasn't familiar with it. How long ago was it. this cuz the braids are kind of new for T Parks. The, the, yeah, it's new. Like I follow T Parks yeah. really really heavy. Literally, so the the blue passion twist was big for her. She doesn't do stuff like that. So she did the blue twist and Arizona baddies page reposted Went it viral. but did not tag the hairstylist. And you know Swanee ain't playing. Yeah, I'm like, what the hell? So T. Parks wrote in there, hey, such a love by Swanee. T- Kyrie wrote in there, Swanee. <laughs> Hennessy the Barbie wrote, Swanee. And I'm thinking, fuck her. They done tagged me, and now you ain't ta- you still ain't fixed it. So the Arizona Trending Show comes up. And I'm like, that's that nigga right there. So I, I, I followed the page because I was upset. And I, I said, when I meet this person, I'm going to tell him how I feel. So I walk up to him, and I was trying not to embarrass my fiance because she was a photographer as well. And I saw him in a red jacket. I'm like, uh-huh, you standing out. <laughs> so I do my little carpet, and I go around through the back. And I go, are you Terrence? You run the Arizona Baddie page? She's like, oh, yeah, why? What's up? I'm like, you don't fucking tag me in my work. That's rude as hell. Like, come on. I unfollowed you. You hurt my feelings. I don't like that. And ever since then... He, I, first I know of Terrence all, was taken back. Like, I, yo, I didn't mean that. He no, he was to, like, whoa. Right. Like, no, oh, now I know you. Let me get a video. Let me tag you right, right now. Right, right. Automatically, I felt like, damn. When Kyrie told me, and I told Kyrie about the guy, I'm like, whoever this guy is, he's rude as fuck. He's like, no, so when you when you meet him, you're going to like him. I meet him, love him. Brother comes to Santan. We have sleepovers. We hang out. He comes to the shop and just kick it with me just to pick my brain and see how I run my businesses. Um, and he's fucking amazing what he does. He really cares about promoting other people and their businesses. And people need to start paying his fucking money. Most definitely, he's 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 taking a platform, you know, with starting it from the ground up. From the ground up, and he needs the respect that he deserves. Like he works hard, and he really does. This dude is probably a ghost because how you go to all these places in one day? Right, and I he's can't, everywhere. I can't stand being out either. Like I, I with really, a fucking iPhone. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah, that work. That's that's what. Yeah, that's how he's building. I admire his hustle and his grind, and that's why anybody like that. That my circle consists of people like that. Most you know? definitely. So we got Terrence, you know, Kyrie, obviously, who was somebody that I've had on the show a few times. Yes. Who's, everybody loves here in Arizona. He's mm-hmm. a good spirit, good person, you know, big host. Super out here. positive, very supportive. Anything you post and you tag him, he's going to hype you up. Very, very I'm true. like, damn, three comments, period. It make you me look lit. Three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate that because you need that encouragement from people. It, it, it Kyrie makes will a push the algorithm for sure. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> and even in, in a club, his environment, the way he does what he does, he, he deserves everything he's getting right now. Um, you know, so I, I appreciate him as a person as well. And he's a brother to me too. So, and then Taylor Parker, that's my baby. Uh, T parks. I met her in 2018. Uh, when I was starting my club in days, you know, I've, I've had kids. My first time going to the club was 2018. Um, so I went in the club and I walk into international. This is when international was lit. And I'm like, um, y'all got lockers for my purse. You know, where the lockers at? Cause I saw lockers in the corner by the, the bar. Parks? Yeah. T parks. She's Your first like, time ever meeting people. First time meeting her. I'm like, hey, girl, you got a locker? Like, you work here? Is that a locker? She's like, oh, no, those are not for you. Those are for us. But I'll hold your purse for you. I didn't even know this girl. Right. As pretty as she is, she could have been a bitch like most right. of the pretty girls in Scottsdale. Instead, right. she's like, I'll hold your purse. She didn't know me. I didn't know her. And that started our relationship. So every time I would go to the club, I never paid. Because T Parks would walk outside in her nice, cute outfit and come on, Swanee. And I'm like, I got like five people with me. Come on, bring them in. Right. You know, free shots. Like, she really looked out for me and she made me feel like important. And I did her first extensions when she did uh, when she was on Wild and Out. She's still on there, you know, on and off. Um, but when she went on there, she wanted her hair done, and you know that's how she became a client. Something just happened to her Instagram. I mean, how can they take down T Park's Instagram? Somebody's being a fucking hater, um, but she'll get it back like easily, you know. She needs to get in touch with Nick Cannon and see if he agreed. Can make a phone call real quick. I don't think he would mind. Like for her, he, it'd be his loss if he doesn't. You know what I mean? For sure. So 
I think everybody should just repost and reshare. Uh, but because she's so pure and she's such a good person, I haven't met not one person who doesn't like T Parks. Literally, she's not I, one. I mean, now I have Swanee. I mean, be, between both of you guys, you guys are both probably the purest people I've had on my show. No, oh, thank you. It's and for sure. That's probably why we click so well, you know? Anybody who I talk about her to in private, oh, I love her. She Since smells she, good too, and she's really vegan. She don't eat no chicken. She's one hundred percent been to vegan. <sighs> one time I ate my food in front of her. I'm like, fuck, she's gonna judge me. <laughs> I'm like, T-Parks, I'm so sorry. I have to eat this taco. I'm so sorry. She's like, girl, it's okay. And I love that she doesn't make, she doesn't shame you for not being a vegan. Right. Let me live my life. You know, right. I'm I'm holding on to weight right. I got. I gotta eat this chicken. Um, but she's very supportive. Every my kid's birthday, she makes cakes for them, vegan cakes. Yeah, she has. She makes she has a business, takery or something. Yeah, takery. Yeah. And she drove to Santan Valley to deliver, to deliver my son's cake last year. She drove there with the cake by herself. She made me a cake for my salon grand opening, uh, Touch of Love Salon Cake, pink, pretty. Um, very good friend, so I appreciate her. T Parks, and then obviously Dot. Yes, Dot, and then there's uh, so Jada. Jada. Jada is a, was my client initially with doing her hair, then she became a friend through that, you know? So I want to I say this right now, because this is important, I want to make mm -hmm. sure I say it on the show with you. Jada, these past six months, she's did it, you know, with her song, did it, and now she's Period. done it. and still doing it. She is somebody now, I've been talking about her a lot recently. I've been watching Jada for the past year. Mm -hmm. The past six months, though, she's turned into now something um, different. Great. She has the persona on stage. Mm -hmm. She has the presence. Her music sounds really good. Mm -hmm. She's a good person. And she has the whole ambience. And the drive. Stuff. She and has she's it. humble. I believe in her. I believe in her. I know she's going to make it far. So that's why when you believe in somebody, you support them, you know? And you make sure that they see the support, not when they're bigger than life, but right now when they're working their ass off. And then you, know? you, see, you see all these artists and influencers, they're tapping in with you. Mm -hmm. um, and we got the biggest names here, at least in Arizona. You know, yes. they're, they're working with Swanee. I mean, we even had Kyler. Period. You know, with Swanee. He'll be you know back. I mean? and, and, yeah. you, and you released him. Yeah. You know you what I mean? Go. <laughs> you gotta go. got switched over, you know. And I feel like it's still, for me, it's no love lost, you know. I'm just, I'm an open book and I'm sensitive. I'm a Pisces. You don't be mean to me. Be nice, you know. Talk to me with respect and I'm going to give it back. But I will match your energy. You don't disrespect me and think I'm going to just take it, you know? So you have three salons. Mm -hmm. Break down um, right now. Tell me every single thing that you offer. So, of course, we offer hair services such as braids, locks, extensions. You know, I have a guy and guy here. We're going to give him hair. Um, we offer eyebrow waxing. We offer Brazilians, uh, teeth whitening, tooth gems, massages, facials. I have a girl who does tattoos. Um... Shit, damn I mean, it, everything. I just made one of my rooms in my shop into a kid room. We might offer daycare services. At this point, I'm there all day. So drop your kid off and you can do a drop-in rate. And I mean that because there's a lot of moms who are single out there and they're struggling. And if we're at the shop all day, the least I can do is watch a kid for a few hours. Um, but your kid got to listen because I like to spank kids. You feel me? You know? <laughs> if your kid don't listen, they can't come. How important is it for you to stay organized and manage the business the way you do? Because we all know what you do as far as the hair is concerned. Mm -hmm. But you're a businesswoman, mm -hmm. and you have three salons. You have eight employees. So yes. You have people underneath you that you have to make sure are taken care of, and then you also have you know the state of Arizona that you have to take care of, and yes. all the business license and all the licenses that come with that, a the lot. taxes and the mm -hmm. IRS and all mm -hmm. this shit. Um, I give you a lot of credit. How do you manage that? Um, being a, a new fiance and then also having four kids and <laughs> everything else that you're doing. And I think I have about twenty arms. Um, I'm really good at just organizing my life. So I'll pre-plan my life for a whole year if I have to. I use my calendar. I use Google Calendar. Everything's written out. My schedule, my kids. Right now, we're on seven days on, seven days off. They're with their dad for a week. They're with me for a week. So that works. I get to have a week of no kids. I don't know what that's like. I've, had, I've been a mom for 10 years. I get to poop with nobody watching me. It's amazing. Just so you know. Um, you know, and amongst <laughs> other about things. Poop a lot of yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's normal. I just appreciate it so much, you know. Um, but um, honestly, it's just, it's just, I'm so organized. And I'm so uh, consistent. I wake up and my, my brain's like, okay, girl, get your ass up. You got to go to Tempe. I drive 45 minutes every day. That's my commute. I live in Santan. I drive to Tempe for five years. I've been doing that commute. Um, it's important for me to continue to be consistent because I have four kids. And even when I had their father in my life, I was still the person that I am. I just, I don't need a man to take care of me. And I want to make sure that I can be content after that. So it's important for me to stay consistent and provide for my kids regardless because I'm their mom. That's just how I think. They're the reason, you know. Where can everybody... Um find the salon online or find you online on google you can uh type in a uh, touch of love salon and i pop up easily um there are two different locations but luckily they're like not too far apart so if you get lost you'll figure it out but you have to type in tempe when you search for touch of love um on instagram is swanee touch of love once you type that in 
you'll see me, the girls I'm normally tagging their work. Then I, ha- then I have an actual business page for the all the salon, all of the salons, Touch of Love Tempe on Instagram. But a lot of times they girls people go directly through me, and I don't mind that. And I have the book link on my you know my page as well. And then there's Yelp and all this other stuff I didn't even sign up for, but they have it out there. So it's not my name is so uh, it's not common. So once you t- Swanee is just it's just easy. Is Swanee the the full real name? No, Swanika is my real name. Swanika, Swanika Michelle Abriana Butler is my birth name. When does Swanee become full in effect? In high school, my teacher said he's not going to stress himself out, so he's going to start calling me Swanee. It was my freshman year. The teacher called you Swanee. Yes. Shout out, teacher. You know, it used to be Nika. That's what my brother and sisters called me because Swanika. Yeah, Swanee was just okay. So Swanika is the is the L A in me, right? Okay. Like, are you? Look professional. When you go to LA, you're, you got you're me Swanika. fucked up. No, and a lot of times some clients need Swanika because just because I'm a business, <laughs> I'm a business owner and I right. want to be respected and be professional. But you have me fucked up. You're gonna pay for your appointment. You're gonna be on time, and if for you're late, sure. you're canceled. Absolutely. And you and you reschedule. You send another deposit. Like, how do you think I pay Absolutely. my bills? I'm not shaking. For you sure. know what I mean? Like, come on now. Uh, so it's like when it's no respect, Swanika has to step in. But Swanee is the <laughs> hey, please send your deposit. How are you today? Come on in, have a seat. And then Swanika is a bitch. Where I'm like, oh, who are you talking to? You know. So it's like I have to learn. I manage, I learn how to switch it on and off. It's important. People sure. will walk all over you if you don't speak up for yourself, you know? Well, Swanee, um, you got a lot going on. A lot. This is a music platform. Yeah. So let me ask you um, who your favorite artist is all time and then who your favorite artist is right now in Arizona. So my favorite artist of all time is Chris Brown. I will never cheat on him. I, all those people, they say he hit, he did not do it on purpose. So they you would started. have a threesome with Chris Brown and, and, and Diana if she if she approved? Oh, God, I told thee. Okay, okay. First of all, of course I would. I'm sorry. Right. Okay, okay. It's like not my fault. It's Chris Brown. She understands. It's only him, though. Gotcha. And Rihanna. Rihanna, we could have one with Rihanna. We could all be together. Me, Chris Brown, Rihanna. Indeed. I mean, I don't think she would mind those four. But outside of Chris Brown, I love Blast. I just got on the Blast train, um, and I know all his he music. He has a song with Ross. On yes. Ross's album. And he has a song with Mozzie. I don't Mozzie's even know Mozzie that well, Mozzie's but fire. I was excited with the songs that I heard. Um, and I, I'm going to see Blast in August, on August 20th, your birthday. Right. Um, and I get to see him. I got a VIP ticket, so I'm excited. Dope, super dope. But out here, my favorite artist is Jada Pink, period. Like, she's fucking lit. And I love my – Dot is my bro, of course. I'm going to support him. Terrence does music as well. Kyrie does music. All of my bros are artists, so it, it is what it is. But my favorite, 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 favorite artist is my fiance. She's actually fucking amazing. Like, she's, she's not out there – the way everybody else is, but she's fucking good at it. She sings, um, she raps? She melodizes, is what she calls it. Let's bring her on. If Swanee approves, we're going to bring her on the show. Bring her on here. You right. would love it. And she's so she pretty. She needs to perform. And she has really nice white teeth. So. All right. Yeah. Real. Yeah. Real. Like, fucking real. I got veneers, so they don't count. Yeah. But it's yours, though. <laughs> Fuck off. That's your shit. This is my hair. I dare somebody tell me they not paid for it. For sure. These are my boobs. Don't let them do you, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, this is one of my favorite interviews. Um. You're in Arizona. Mm-hmm. You will go to. You'll make the house calls if it's you know if, if you yes. come correct. Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. That's the house plus call tip. fee. Plus tip. Plus tip and service. Right. Yeah, and if you late coming out the bathroom, I'm charging you. Right. This is a per- see, be on time to your house call. This is this is the thing. Even when you're dealing with my show or anybody, when you're dealing in business, you just want to be professional no matter what. Yeah. Um, especially because you're gonna want to get a good product and you know that you're gonna deliver. We it can good. be cool, but pay me. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's crazy. I'm going to say this really quick because this is how awesome Terrence is. Um, when I first met him, he was like, damn, you guys are dope. Like, you and D are so dope. I want to document your your relationship, you know, and get you up until your wedding day. Um, and he, he's like, you know, I'm like, well, how much do you charge for that? I'm only going to charge you 100 I'm like, no, how much do you charge for that? Well, typically I would charge 500 if I'm documenting something like this. So I cash up him half of it up front. He responds back like, whoa, like, why'd you do that? Because that's what you fucking charge. Like, I don't need a favor. I want you to support my business because you're going to pay for your hair service if you had hair. So I want to pay you for the services that you're offering. Um, I don't see the point in not paying people. Same with David. Uh, Ratzik, I don't know his last name, but white guy, uh, photographer. I've seen him on Instagram. Yeah, he's, he, he did a photo shoot for me and D. He was going to do it for free as well. I'm like, how much would you charge for this? He didn't give me a price, so I sent him 300 because I think your time was worth $300. And that's because also you're a boss and you, yeah. you're a business owner, and I can already tell that you're smart with your yeah, money. Yeah, it's like pay I'm people. I'm sure Swanee has plenty of money in the bank. She's not hurting. Period. At all. Period. She has three businesses. Yes. Um, and you're doing everything. You're, Thank you. You're a, you're a role model. In Arizona, like. we need to get better at paying our people for their services. Like, stop trying to get a free ride. Pay I agree people. with that. I agree yeah. with that completely. Mm-hmm. So, but that's basically it for me. All right. Listen, 
Swanee, um, Swanee's Touch of Love on the Instagram. You got yes. three locations. Wh- wh- give me all the locations one more time. Uh, Tempe, so that's Southern and McClintock, and then Baseline. Those are my suites. So okay. there's two different buildings, but they're considered you know two different locations. Um, and those girls are all amazing, and I don't charge a lot. They pay six hundred to eight hundred a month, and they're all managing pretty well. So I'm excited to see that these women can be business owners and not spend their fucking last on it. You know, right. so. Listen, um, everybody here, tap in with Swanee. She does men's, women's. She does it all. Kids. Kids. Mm-hmm. So whatever you need, Swanee can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you don't have any requests for pants or shorts. She's going to wear whatever the fuck she wants. Period. Whatever um, I want. I like two pieces. <laughs> I'm little. Let me be. She's taking care of your hair, so she's going to take care of herself how she wants to. Period. And um, congratulations on the engagement. Thank you. You're super Thank happy. you so much. We support the hell out of you. Thank um, you. Everybody right now, there's only one person I'm going to send you to. You're going to go to Swanee. Any artist that I have that comes in town and they're about to do a music video Thank or they, you. Need their hair, they need to get their hair done, we're bringing them to Swanee. Um, so Swanee's so Touch sweet. of Love. This is the Matty Eye Show. And uh, we'll bring you back sometime soon. Thank you so much. Love you. It.